So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how you can make a lotion. So in this video, I showed you guys exactly how I wrote this formula and I also explained to you guys how you can customize it if you guys want to. Well, I've been doing an entire series on emulsifiers and emulsions. I'll link the playlist down below if you guys missed all those videos. So you first want to take a sanitized beaker. I do have a video all about how I sanitize my equipment, so I'll have that video linked down below. You could also use just a UV sanitizer Obviously make sure you wash your equipment in soap and water first, but you can pop it into a UV sterilizer and there you go. So you want to weigh out each of your ingredients. You can do this individually in separate containers first, or you can weigh them all out into just one beaker. If you are somebody who tends to overweigh things, it's probably best to weigh all your ingredients out individually in separate containers first and then combine them. So we have our water phase beaker. We're going to add in all of our water soluble ingredients that aren't heat sensitive. So the distilled water and the glycerin is the only things in this phase. Now for the oil phase, again, grab another sanitized beaker. When making oil and water emulsions, you always wanna make sure that the oil phase beaker is the larger beaker because we're gonna be pouring everything in the oil phase. Go ahead and add in your emollients. Here I'm using jojoba oil and then my emulsifier. Now what you wanna do is grab your scale and tear your scale so it says zero and place your water phase beaker on the scale and take note of how much it weighs. Because we are gonna be heating this up and some of the water is going to evaporate, so we're gonna to have to replace that water that evaporates after we heat it up. So the next thing you wanna do is cover both of your beakers with foil and place them in a water bath. So to create a water bath, all you need is a stove top, so your oven would work totally fine. I have a portable electric stove top here. You wanna take a pan, fill it with like an inch or so of water. It really just depends on how big your beakers are, but you want most of the water to cover the product. It doesn't need to cover it completely, but just like a good portion of it. And you're gonna place both of the beakers in the water. And you wanna turn your stovetop on about medium heat because you don't want it to start boiling and water going everywhere. Make sure everything in your phase B is melted and your phase A is right around roughly the same temperature, it doesn't need to be exact. You might hear a lot that you need to heat to 70 degrees Celsius or like 158 degrees Fahrenheit and hold it there for 20 minutes, meaning heat both phases to 70 degrees Celsius and let it stay around that temperature for 20 minutes. This will supposedly get you a more stable emulsion. As a non-chemist, I can't really say if that's actually going to make your formula more stable because I have many times not kept track of the time that my phases are in the water. I just put them in the water, let it melt. Once they're melted and roughly around the same temperature, I blend them together. And that's never affected the stability of my emulsions. But again, I'm not a chemist. I can just speak from my experience. So let me know your thoughts on this down in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Lots of different places I read that you need to heat and hold. I hear other places that you don't need to heat and hold. Overall, I feel like it just comes down to the emulsifier you're using. Sometimes I might have to go and mix phase B, specifically with like BTMS 50. Sometimes that will like struggle with melting. So sometimes you'll come across ingredients in your phase B that just need to be mixed in, have a little assistance. And sometimes with phase A, like if I use Allantoin in phase A, which is the water phase, Sometimes I'll need to mix that to help that dissolve. You might need to come back and mix your phases to help get everything melted and dissolved. So if you don't want to use this water bath method, you could also use a hot plate. These are something I recently got. This is actually a hot plate and a magnetic stirrer. So you can add these little beans in the beaker, turn it on and it'll just stir for you so you don't have to stir and hurt your little hands. This is also really beneficial when you need to like pour something into a beaker and mix at the same time, magnetic stir. So you could put your beakers on here 
and just turn it on and it will melt everything. Just to warn you though, these hot plates get super, super hot, like 300 degrees Fahrenheit hot. So you don't need to turn the heat up very much at all, just a little bit. And make sure you keep an eye on it because these get hot really, really fast. So overall, I think the water bath method is totally fine. It works great for beginners. That's what I used for years, but these hot plates specifically are great for ingredients that are more stubborn to melt. So now that your phase A and B are melted and roughly around the same temperature, you can grab your water phase, place it back on your scale, make sure your scale is teared. So it has zero on the screen and you add back in any water that may have evaporated. Normally it's about less than a gram. Sometimes there is no evaporation, just depends. And I just use room temperature distilled water. That's never affected it. Now you want to pour your water phase into your oil phase. There are specific emulsifiers that might want to do it the other way around. But the reason I always recommend pouring the water phase into the oil phase is because sometimes when you pour oil phases into another container, some of the oils, like the emulsifiers and hardeners will harden up on the sides of the beaker and not all the product will pour out. So with the water phase, you get a much cleaner pour. That's why I recommend doing the water phase into the oil phase. But again, you might come across an emulsifier where in the formulating guidelines, it recommends doing it in a specific way. So once the water and oil phase are combined, you want to grab an immersion blender. You can purchase one of these on Amazon, probably at a supermarket as well. Add that into your lotion and just give it a couple pulses. If you hold it for too long, things might splash everywhere. Really depends on how big your beaker is. But yeah, just give it a couple pulses and then you can remove your immersion blender. I normally like to just put this in the water phase beaker and I like to come back periodically as it cools down to mix it again. And I will continue coming back periodically to mix it until it starts to thicken. Once it starts to thicken, do not mix it with the immersion blender anymore because this can add air bubbles in the emulsion, which can cause stability issues. A lot of questions I get here is, can I use like a hand mixer? No, you need to use a high shear mixer. So an immersion blender is what home crafters use, or you can use a homogenizer, 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 homogenizer. I don't know how to say it, but here's an example one on Amazon. They're pretty expensive. I kind of want one one day, but I've been formulating for years now and I've never really found the need for one because an immersion blender works totally fine and it's so much cheaper. So while the phase A and B are cooling down, we are gonna work on phase C. And I always use a small beaker here. I mean, obviously it depends on how many ingredients is in your phase C, but I'm first gonna add in the distilled water in the DL Panthenol and mix those two together to get it to dissolve. So if you have any powdered ingredients in your phase C, take care of those first. If you have oil soluble ingredients and water soluble ingredients in your phase C, Sometimes it works better to weigh those out separate or you can just add them all together in one beaker. That's typically what I do. So I'm just going to add my GeoGuard 221 in there and then my vitamin E. As you can tell, it's not all mixed together, but right before I pour it into phase A and B, I'm just gonna mix it all and then pour and it'll be fine. But if you have a lot of water soluble and oil soluble ingredients in your phase C, I would weigh those out separate in separate beakers. Or what you can do is weigh them out directly into your phase A and B. But again, if you're someone who accidentally overweighs things, this might not be the best option because you can't take it away once it's in there. So your best bet is to weigh it out first and then pour it in. So once your phase A and B, which is now your emulsified oil and water phase, is around 100 degrees Fahrenheit, this is like 38 degrees Celsius. Once it's right around there, you can start adding in your cool down ingredients. So we'll just take my phase C beaker with all of my ingredients weighed out in and then just pour that in there. And I just hand mix it here. Again, I don't recommend using the immersion blender because that will just add too much air bubbles in your lotion and that causes stability issues. There you go, you just made a lotion. So what you wanna do is let your lotion cool down to room temperature before covering it with some plastic wrap. But let's say you need to leave immediately and it's not cooled down completely. What I like to do is again, put plastic wrap over top of it and then punch a couple holes in the top with like a toothpick or something pointy. That way it has some air vents so condensation doesn't settle on the top. And then when I come back in a couple hours, I'll take the plastic wrap off 
and put a new one on, but preferably you wanna stay with your emulsion until it cools to room temperature and then you can cover it. And you always wanna let it sit overnight because it will be the different the next day. Most of the times it thickens up. This always happens with emulsions. Sometimes they won't, but most of the time they will thicken up. And with most formulas, like any product you make, they will be different the next day. Like if you're making a foaming product, like a face wash or a body wash, the product might be more clear the next day. It might have less air bubbles. It will look completely different. So before you think a formula has failed, let it sit for a day, maybe even sometimes a week, it might change. I know when I work with like body butters, those take sometimes like a whole week to reach their final hardness. So always let your things sit because they do change over time. But then when you come back the next day, your emulsion will be ready to package up. So if you want to put it in a bottle, you can pour it out into like a uh, plastic baggie, snip a tip on the top, squeeze it into your bottle. Of course, you could use a piping bag instead, or if you have a filling machine, I really only recommend using filling machines if you have large batches, because then it, it would just be like a whole thing to clean out. It'd just be easier to use a little baggie if you have a small batch. But if you're making giant batches, get a filling machine. That is how you make a lotion. Don't forget to go over and check me out over on Patreon, where I post two bonus videos every single month. So there is so much content that you guys can go binge watch over there just for $5 a month. And for $10 a month, you can get a small business shout out. So let's shout out the small businesses. Nature's Farm Girl, thank you so much. Let's Blend over on Etsy, hempygirl.com, shoplevies.com, 7th House and Oak on Etsy, at Black Petal Beauty, Owl and Lily over on Etsy, ZLAmore.com, I hope I said that right, EmbraceBeautyEssentials.com, LegendaryBathAndBody.com, at StardustBathAndBody, AstariApothecary.com, she also has a YouTube channel, and Revega Cosmetics over on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for being a patron, and if you want a Patreon shout out, then go sign up for my $10 tier on Patreon.